When Apple introduced the Touch Bar in 2016 with the MacBook Pro, it was marketed as a revolutionary way to interact with the Mac. The idea was to replace traditional function keys with a dynamic, context-sensitive touchscreen that could adapt to different applications. On paper, this seemed like an innovative step forward. However, the reality was quite different. And by 2021, Apple completely removed the touch bar from the MacBook Pro lineup. Here's why. Lack of user adoption. The touch bar was meant to enhance productivity, but in practice, many users simply didn't find it useful. Most people are accustomed to physical function keys and having a small touch screen strip didn't feel like a major improvement. Power users and professionals, who are the core MacBook Pro audience, rely heavily on muscle memory for shortcuts. The touch bar required users to look down at the keyboard to see options, breaking workflow efficiency. Casual users didn't see a strong reason to use it, as it didn't add much value for everyday tasks like browsing or media consumption. Despite Apple's attempt to make it feel futuristic, it never became a must-have feature. Inconsistent developer support. For the touch bar to be truly useful, app developers needed to embrace it and create meaningful functionality. While some apps like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and Adobe Photoshop integrated touch bar features, many others ignored it or added only basic functions. Third-party developers weren't fully on board, meaning users didn't get a universal experience across their favorite apps. The lack of deep customization and software support limited its potential, making it feel more like a gimmick than a game changer. If developers had found creative and highly practical ways to use the touch bar, it might have had a better chance at survival. Professional users preferred physical keys. Apple's MacBook Pro lineup is primarily targeted at professionals, developers, designers, video editors, and power users. Many of them heavily rely on function keys for their workflows, whether it's adjusting brightness, volume, or using keyboard shortcuts. Programmers, for example, frequently use the ESC key, which was initially a virtual key on the touch bar, leading to frustration. Apple later reintroduced a physical ESC key due to demand. Video editors who used Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro often preferred tactile keys for precise editing rather than a touch screen that required looking down. For this audience, the touch bar didn't add efficiency. It slowed things down. Battery and performance considerations. The touch bar was a small OLED screen, which meant it consumed extra power. While not a major drain, it still required resources that could have been used elsewhere. Apple is obsessed with optimizing battery life and removing unnecessary components helped improve efficiency. Simplifying the MacBook's internals also meant fewer failure points, reducing repair costs, and increasing longevity. Additionally, the presence of the touch bar required a separate T-Series chip to function, adding complexity to the MacBook's design. With Apple Silicon Max, Simplifying the hardware became a priority. Apple's shift back to practicality. One of the biggest criticisms of Apple in the late 2000s and 10s was that they were prioritizing form over function, especially with their MacBooks. This was also when they introduced the butterfly keyboard, which was widely criticized for reliability issues. By 2021, Apple had started listening to professional users again 
and making decisions based on function rather than just aesthetics. This included bringing back physical function keys, reintroducing ports like MagSafe, HDMI, and SD card slots, fixing the keyboard with a return to the scissor switch mechanism. The removal of the touch bar was part of this broader shift to making MacBooks more practical and user-friendly, rather than chasing experimental features that didn't catch on. Was the touch bar a failure? While it wasn't a massive success, the touch bar wasn't completely useless. Some users appreciated it for media controls, quick access to emojis, and app-specific shortcuts. However, Apple never made it compelling enough for the majority of users to embrace it. If Apple had made the touch bar more customizable, allowed for haptic feedback or a way to feel the keys, encouraged stronger developer adoption, it might have had a longer lifespan. But ultimately, Apple decided to go in a more practical direction that better suited its core audience. The removal of the touch bar was part of Apple's broader course correction, moving away from flashy but impractical features and back to what MacBook Pro users truly wanted. The physical function keys returned and most people didn't miss the touch bar at all.